Welcome to Disciple Parenting. I'm Ben Martin, the Children and Family Pastor here at Pioneer Memorial Church. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about complaining. Complaining is one of those things that seems to pervade every single facet of our lives. It, it's at home, it's at school, it's at church, it's everywhere. We complain about everything. We complain when our sports team doesn't win or play the way we think they should. We complain when the sermon doesn't go the way we would like. We complain about everything. And this seems to be hereditary because our children seem to complain about everything as well. They complain about the fact that we're doing A instead of B, and then they complain because we're doing B instead of A. They complain about the food we make or absolutely everything. What is the solution to complaining? We're going to talk about that in this week's video, because this week's video isn't just how do you help your kids? It's also how do you help yourself not complain so much? Let's get into it. You can't really talk about complaining without thinking about the children of Israel. The children of Israel were some of the biggest complainers ever. You would have these incredible miracles where God would do amazing things, and then something would happen. They'd run out of water, run out of food. Something would happen. And don't get me wrong, those are big things. But they seemed to forget everything God had done for them. And all of a sudden, their complaints were so dramatic because they were talking about, here we are, it's the end of the world. Why did you bring us out here to die? And over and over again, they did this. And as you read through the book of Exodus, it's so easy to be like, why? Why were you complaining so much? Did you not realize like God parted the sea? God was feeding you bread from heaven. Like God made water come out of a rock. You would think that they would remember these things. And instead of their first default being complaining, they'd instead turn to God. But that's not what happened. But if we're honest with ourselves, aren't we kind of like that? When things don't go the way we want, how often do we first turn to complaining? How often do our kids choose complaining? It's pretty pervasive, isn't it? And so what is the solution to complaining? Actually, I think the solution can be found strangely hidden in the book of Exodus. You see, the first half is like this birth of a nation. Like here, the Israelites are leaving slavery and they're becoming a free nation. They're becoming Israel. And then halfway through the book, there seems to be this weird shift where all of a sudden it gets into these details of the sanctuary. And it almost doesn't make sense. Like those details of the sanctuary seem like they would better fit in the book of Leviticus, which is all talking about the rituals. And why wasn't it there? It seems like maybe those two things don't go together. But in reality, what you also find in that split is there's a shift. The complaining seems to end. What made that shift? And what I like about the book of Exodus is hidden in that shift, we find that the children of Israel are no longer just partakers who are experiencing God's miracles. They're experiencing the great things God's doing. They now take ownership. They begin to participate. And so they're bringing their fine linens, their animal skins, their gold and silver all together to make this sanctuary. It is through their participation that the sanctuary, the very house of God, is formed. Often, when we're complaining, we're doing it from the back seat. We're doing it from the sidelines. We're doing it in the comfort of our own homes. But what if, what if instead of complaining, we participated? What if instead of critiquing those who are doing, we got involved and we participated? It would give us the ability to not just talk about how things didn't go the way they should have, 
but rather it gives us the ability to help shape them into the things they can. And I mean, this was Paul's vision for the church when he talks about the body of Christ, which he talked about over and over again in his letters, the body of Christ, where each one of us has a role, each one of us has a part to play, each one of us has ownership in the church. And so let's get involved. Let's participate instead of complain. Let's raise kids who find out where they fit into the body of Christ, helping them know how to participate, how to take ownership. Because ownership is really at the heart of this. It's easy to complain about what other people are doing. But when it's us, when it's us in the driver's seat, when it's us at the wheel, when it's us up front, instead of complaining, the natural reaction is, how can we do it better next time? And so it changes the dynamic. This strange shift that you find hidden in the book of Exodus is actually the blueprint for us in ending complaining. It gives us the ability to say, you know what? I don't know about you, but I'm done complaining. I'm done critiquing other people's work, and I'm ready to join the work myself. I'm ready to participate. I'm ready to get involved. It also gives us the ability to raise children. Raise children into a church where our mode of operation is not to be spectators who critique those up front but rather to be participators who join in the mission God has called us to do. That's the kind of church I want for my boys. That's the kind of church I want for me. And that's the kind of church I want to invite other people to. Will you join me?